Well, I told you guys that Locked On Leafs offered me a big blockbuster trade deal to try to get the second overall pick and it involved Damon Severson and also Mackenzie Blackwood. The return package for the New Jersey Devils was also nice. However, I want to talk more about that potential blockbuster deal. So I am doing a crossover with one of the hosts of Locked On Leafs as we're going to discuss this trade even further. Buckle up. There's a lot to discuss in today's episode. Your Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils, Trey Matthews. Alrighty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play -play announcer, and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. Joining me on today's show, uh, I, I just want to say, Michael, this is, this uh, crossover has been a long time coming. It is Michael. He is one of the hosts of Locked On Leafs. And Michael, we kind of uh, talked about a silly season trade discussion privately in terms of Nylander, Sadine Campbell, the 25th overall pick in exchange. The, the main factor is Damon Severson and also the second overall pick. But first and foremost, welcome. We'll talk about that uh, momentarily. But uh, how you been, Michael? Oh, uh, you know, hanging in there. I've been watching, you know, the great hockey players like Connor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon. Leon Dreisaitl move on further into the Stanley Cup final. And I'm just wishing to myself, why couldn't Connor or Austin Matthews, you know, put the team on his back a little bit and, you know, bolt themselves forward into this position that they're in. But I'm starting to already move on to off season mode. Like you said, on my podcast, I talked about a bunch of different trade proposals and one was involving your New Jersey devils. I tipped you off and said, Hey, I got this little thought. What are your, what are, what are you thinking of the deal? So here we are. I guess we get a chance to chat about it. I just want to say I have the utmost respect for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think you guys are a very good uh, organization. Yes, you haven't gotten out of the first round since 2004, but you have a lot of good pieces. But the one thing I've said on my show is that, you know, that window is getting smaller, smaller, and smaller because of the financial issue. So I've talked about it on my show, but I've always said I'm not locked on Leafs, so I don't, I, I can't provide full insight of it. But can you inform uh everyone like what the financial situation is like for the Toronto Maple Leafs who are you looking to move who are you looking to shed uh salary wise and how's the roster going to be constructed come next season yeah absolutely um so the Maple Leafs because they went out and they they gave John Tavares 11 million they gave uh Nylander 10.9 or uh Marner 10.9 Matthews is making 11 million and uh Nylander's making about I think it's six, nine, six point nine is his cap hit. So because you got all that money going to those players, making up 50% of your cap, it's really put this team in a bit of a bind, um, you know, and, and everyone wonders, can you win putting that much money toward the forward position and have, you know, kind of lackluster back end and not a stud superstar goaltender. So, you know, now the conversation is, well, I know you're not going to touch Marner. You're not going to touch Matthews. So there's some other players around the fringes that maybe could try and move on from Tavares is the captain, although he slowed down and arguably it would make some sense for the Leafs to move on. It's not going to happen. So the real big piece that now Leafs nation is kind of looking at as a potential way to make a, a hockey deal, to improve their club, alleviate some cap space, but also help make this team take the next step is William Nylander. And, and that's a player who, is obviously a solid talent. Like he's an elite talent when he's on his A game. He's a point per game player this year. He had 80 points, um, a career high year for him. So he's kind of the guy that everyone's pinpointing. You can move on. Mrazic's a guy who they can move and, and get rid of some contract space. Also, uh, Alex Kerfoot's making three and a half million. He's got good versatility, but he's somebody who also the Leafs, if they needed to open up some cap space, is a player who they could move on from. Um, but outside of, of those three guys, maybe a Jake Muzzin, if they feel like they can move him, but he's got a no trade clause. Uh, but those three, I would say, are maybe the most, I guess, likely options to be dealt if the Maple Leafs are looking to open up some cap space this summer and make some moves. Makes sense. And on your show recently, you talked about possibly trading away William Nylander, Rasmus Sedin, 
the rights to Jack Campbell, which we'll talk about momentarily, the 25th overall pick. And in exchange, you want the Devils' second overall pick, Damon Severson and Mackenzie Blackwood. So we've talked about Damon Severson on, on the show before. We, we, I remember talking to you uh, prior to the trade deadline saying you would love to have uh, Damon Severson on your roster and you feel as though, like, you know, he's a solid defenseman. And you're not wrong there. Yes, he makes a few boneheaded moves, but at the same time, great offensive tool to have on your, uh, on your blue line. And I feel as though, like, you know, Damon Severson, he is often overlooked, but there's a reason why he averaged the most ice time amongst all our defensemen, and that's over Dougie Hamilton, Ryan Graves, Jonas Siegenthaler. Damon Severson was on the, the rink, um, I, I believe, um, more times than any other defenseman for a Devils organization. So I could see why you want Damon Severson. But um, I, I did have uh, – so my emotions when I first listened to the uh, Locked on Leafs episode was that I was flabbergasted. I was shocked. I was happy. I was confused. But I was also a little hesitant. So I was going through all those emotions because – when I look at Nylander, yeah, a roller coaster. Because when I see Nylander, great player, obviously third on your team in points, and like you said, he's a point per game player. And the one thing that I've said that the Devils need is that they need more for depth. Because outside of Hughes, Heischer, and Brat, we didn't really get that much offensive production. However, I'm banking on maybe Janssen, Mercer, um, Sharon Govich, you know, or or Tatar players like that to take their offensive game to another level come next year. I need one or two, or it'd be nice to fall four, but I, I, I'm just going to be conservative. I'm going to be like one or two. I hope they, they like score like anywhere from 50 to 60 points would be my ideal thing. But I know that's a little bit of a tall order, but if I didn't want to do it, I would say either Sharon Govich or Mercer have the best shot, but adding Nylander could definitely help with our top six, because if I recall correctly on your line combinations, he's on your third line, right? Am I correct? Not necessarily. Like he he did play uh, a, a segment of the season on the third line, but it was more so about like roster construction and the way they wanted to attack, as opposed to it being you know he's not in the team's top six. It was done kind of purposefully, but then there would also be shifts where because he's on the third line, he's not playing as much. So then they would throw him out with the top line or in the second line for just to get him a couple extra shifts, and that worked when he was playing with those star players. So you know it took. Just call him a third liner is a little disingenuous. I would not say that you are calling him that, but it's it, I was just going based on what, it, I was just going right. based on what I saw, like uh like exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like I'm like to think about it in those terms, I think is a little disingenuous because he is one hundred percent not only a top six talent, but when this guy is firing on all cylinders, he's a top line talent in William Nylander. Um and I think ultimately I don't think the Maple Leafs are looking to like shop this guy, but if there's an opportunity for them to fill out the roster for them to get better um, and not necessarily maybe a guy who's more skilled than Nylander, but a guy who brings some different tools that Nylander does to the roster. That's the type of deal that I think Leaf fans and Kyle Dubas might be looking at in a trade for Nylander. So you look at the skill set that a Damon Severson would bring. It's clearly way different than what Nylander has and possesses. Um, you know, the, the number two pick is obviously a big deal in that as well. You can get yourself a pretty decent prospect with that trade. Uh, but in terms of Nylander, he's he, like he's, he's not a third liner. He's a terrific, terrific player. Yeah, because he would be on our top six with these. Like, he would either be on Hughes's line, Heizer's line, and that could definitely, like, help us because one of the issues that the Devils had last year was that they were too top-heavy. So, like, we tried putting Hughes and Brown on the same line, and it worked. But when we go down to the second line, he sure didn't really have that much help. So, and he sure wasn't able to get his number. So we moved Brad down to the second line and he sure is able to take his game to another level. And Hughes is able to make Sharon Govich and Mercer better around him. So that's a sacrifice you kind of make, but it would be nice to have like another player that we could rely on to give us a point or a goal. Because if, if he was put onto our roster, he'd be leading our team in goals because, um, uh, Hughes and um, and Brat led our team in goals with 26 a pop. And, you know, that that's something I'm definitely looking for, which is more for depth. Now, I do have a question for you. So a lot of people are saying that uh, Nylander doesn't like to do the dirty work. He doesn't like to work the corners. So uh, what's your response to that? Because that is a concern that some people do have when it comes to Nylander. They might think he plays a little too safe. Do you think there's any chance like he can like improve on that just a little bit more? 
it's it's a completely fair criticism on William Nylander. I'll say that it's completely fair, and honestly, that's what a lot of it's what gives Leaf fans fits too, and a big reason why he maybe uh, is coming up on a lot of trade proposals is just because of that. Like it's it's the consistency on both ends of the ice that you just you want more from. And there was a clip floating around. I don't know if you saw this or not, but a clip floating around of William Nylander at the World Championships, looking like he was Tom Wilson out there, just dummying dudes on the ice like crushing them into the board sending them down to the ice with these some thundering body checks and it's like where was that guy for the maple Leafs a couple of weeks ago when they could have used it in the stanley cup final so yeah it, it is a little bit of a, a concern not so much that he's he's not willing um to do it it's just when he when he, he comes and goes you know it's a consistency factor with him because when he's on he is engaged in you know corner battles puck battles he's coming back he's he's back checking and you know he is effective in that sense and potentially if you know getting traded from toronto to a different market potentially that could be a little bit of a wake-up call where it's like oh wow like maybe a reason why I got dealt is because i wasn't giving 100 percent effort each and every game i'm gonna make sure on my next uh, the next place I go, I am going to do that. I'm not going to make that mistake again and take it for granted. We're seeing very similar things with Nazem Kadri right now in Colorado. His next step, he didn't take it for granted, and he's completely um, overhauled his game, and now he's just as good in the offensive end as he is in the defensive end. I'm not saying that Nylander is going to be a two-way force by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think it's necessarily a massive concern where it's, you know, a, a, a complete X do not bring this guy in type of situation. Before we continue with more silly season discussion, I want to bring you guys the first live read this morning. And it comes from Bill Barr. So don't you love a chewy chocolate brownie? What about a caramel brownie with caramel swirl on top? So good. What if I told you you can have all that chewy chocolate deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? You're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at Built.com right now. And all you have to do is act fast because they are a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. What about a better dessert? Plus, the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. I replace a regular brownie with built caramel brownie bar in a heartbeat. The best part, caramel brownies are covered in 100% real chocolate, like for real. With built, you don't have to sacrifice a tasty, healthy snack for uh, the sake of goodness. You can have both. And all you have to do is just go to built.com and use promo code LOCKED15. And you'll get 50% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 50% off at built.com. There are a million reasons why you should try built bars. But for now, let's just say that caramel brownie will rock your world. That's not an understatement. With built, tasty is the new healthy. Go to built.com and get your box of caramel brownies right now. Now, and now the second live read comes from our friends at Bet Online. So, Bet Online is your number one source for all your sport betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, odds, including this year's basketball finals matchup. I know I'm a LeBron fan, so I should be a Lakers fan. However, I really don't want to see Steph Curry win another championship, but that's just me. The NHL Hockey Conference Finals, I don't really have any eggs in the basket. Oh, wait. No, I do not want the New York Rangers to win, and I think everyone in New Jersey can agree with that. Major League Baseball, and of course, the latest news from MMA and UFC to boxing. BetOnline is a continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the transit action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, let's get back to this discussion with Michael of Locked On Lease as we discuss the Nylander trade for the second overall pick, essentially. Take it away once again. Yeah, the thing about the New Jersey Devils, and here's why I'm not really concerned about him not like doing the quote-unquote dirty work, is just because we got Nico Heischer. He's a good two-way player. And the New Jersey Devils, I'm not sure if you knew this or not, they're one of the biggest teams in the NHL. So in terms of overall height, I think they rank number eight in the entire uh, uh, National Hockey League. Um, and then they rank number nine for uh, average weight. So they're, they're a pretty big team. So I feel as though you can get someone like Nylander onto your roster and he can like, you know, help uh, just do the scoring. And yes, you can help him on the defensive side of things, or you can help him like, you know, just try to get the dirty work. But maybe if you put him with Nico Heischer, maybe, uh, you know, Heischer can quote unquote hide him in terms of if he's being a little too soft or whatever the case might be. But, you know, I do like Nylander and his overall production. My only concern is that he signed for next year and then the year after so you would have to work out an extension like asap kind of thing because i don't want this to be like a two-year rental kind of thing and then we gave up the second overall pick so that's my 
one of my concerns for Nylander. I've said in the show, which is great player, but he's only signed for next season and then the year after, which is uh, a concern I have now. Rasmus Sedin, restricted free agent. So you would have to work out an extension and then trade him, right? Um, my overall concern for uh, Sedin is that he was dealing with a lot of injuries, like particularly with his knee. So um, can you explain a little bit more like how to give me some more hope for Sedin and like his overall production? Because he's, he's young. He's 22 years of age. Yeah, Absolutely. I think he's a terrific player. Like he's a top four defenseman, uh, two way puck moving type of player. He's extremely smart and cerebral. And, you know, in, in a third pair role this year, he was honestly one of the, he graded out as one of the better defensemen in the NHL. Uh, that said, you, you're assuming that now at 22 going to 23 years old, it's time for him to take that next step. And if he does that correctly, and if he can really go and be a top four guy, you're looking at an extremely valuable player in Rasmus Sandin as a top four puck moving defenseman. So when it comes to uh, to his injury, yeah, he had a knee injury, but I, I don't look at it as long term concern. Uh, I'll pretty much go look at any NHL or I'm sure they've had some sort of bump and bruise and injury throughout their entire career. So I wouldn't necessarily be hung up on that if I were, if I were the New Jersey devils, but he's an RFA. So you got to obviously sign him to a contract and tender him, but I don't think it would be all that expensive. He doesn't have that much uh, NHL experience. You can right. probably get that thing tendered. Another like concern I have, which is I didn't have much to like, you know, go off for him because he's only been in the league for what, like two, three years. Yeah, he hasn't been in the league for, for overly long, but I would say the same thing. I mean, would you have concern over, like, should I have concern over, let's say, a Ty Smith, who also doesn't have much NHL experience, or well, is Ty can, Smith a solid player? Well, I could tell you this. Rookie year, solid. Sophomore year, he was not there. I, I'll be oh. honest with you. He was he was <laughs> not there. I'll be, I, I, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. He hit the sophomore year slump hard, and he was a healthy scratch at uh, a couple of times, like I had high hopes for Ty Smith. He was arguably one of our bad example. Let me use Dawson Mercer, who probably okay. is a better okay. player. Uh, to, better. To use. Okay. But Dawson Mercer, you know, I'd say he's still trying to find his uh, fitting a little bit, but he was a rookie. So, you know, he, when he was on one, he was on one. When he was silent, he was silent. But the one thing you cannot question about Dawson Mercer is his overall work ethic, because he was the only New Jersey devil player this season to suit up in all 82 games never got injured, never a healthy scratch, somehow avoided COVID like early on in the year when the league was cracking down on it. Somehow like, you know, uh, j just was lucky or, or in that sort of sense. But that's one thing I, I and I think he, Mo Sider and also Lucas Raymond were the only rookies this year to play in all 82 games. So that's one thing I cannot question about Dawson Mercer. The kid works really hard. He's wildly inconsistent sometimes, but still a very good player right so so to go to my point though like not a massive uh not a massive sample size in terms of you know being you know pro games but still a quality player and you could say the same thing about rasmus sandine a former first round pick who is becoming an everyday engine there was a point where the maple leafs if he wouldn't have gotten hurt um at the trade deadline this year and missed the whole back half of the season he was a, he was going to become a staple in this lineup. Like they, there was just, it honestly got to a point where it's like, this guy's so good. He's playing extremely well. Anytime he's out there, trust me, the Maple Leaf fans don't want to trade Sandine. They don't think that he's a player, um, you know, who's kind of uh, a guy who's hindering on bus territory or anything like that, or someone needs to change the scenery. It's more of a, look, I understand you got to give, to get so if the maple Leafs want to get some good talent you got to give some up and that's for sandine and the only reason why he's also the guy who people are looking at as a potential trade option and why i've included him in here is that the leaves have an abundance of, of defensemen on the left side in particular so you've got morgan riley jake muzzin mark giordano and rasmus sandine so you know one of those guys ideally uh, if you can move to try and fix a hole somewhere else on the roster. I think that's what you try and do, which is why a left shot in Sandine you're moving, but you're bringing in a right shot back in a Damon Severson. I know there's many of moving parts within the deal, but that's the type of reason why or the, the reason why Sandine is a guy who, you know, is included in a deal like this. And look, he's, he's, he's going to be a, a good sound defenseman. 
And I, I wouldn't have zero qualms if I was on the opposition's getting a guy like Rad- Rasmus Sandin a trade like this. Okay. I can respect that. And, um, you know, I said that's sort of the wild card in, in this whole deal. Sandine is sort of like the question mark that I have. Now let's talk about Jack Campbell. You said obtaining the rights to him. So we're going to pretend like he doesn't enter free agency. You guys like, like work out a deal with him and then you trade him. Is, is, so no. I think someone left a comment down below in the last episode, but could you just yeah. uh, shed some light for it? Like, how would that work? Yeah, so like this happens, this happens every now and then where you could trade somebody's unrestricted rights to somebody. And typically you get like a draft pick in exchange for those rights. And what it does is it will give New Jersey, like if we made this trade, let's say today, just for example, it would give New Jersey from this moment until free agency kicks off on July 15th to have exclusive negotiating rights with Jack Campbell. Whereas if you don't acquire the rights, you're going to have to wait until free agency kicks off on July 15th and have all the suitors that are also available all around the league also trying to call this guy. So it just gives you a head start on negotiations and it gives you an opportunity to try and hammer out a deal without other players or other teams, suitors being able to influence or bid you up. So that's why some teams like to trade for somebody's rights. Now, Granted, typically when you're trading for rights, I mean, you would have to have a pretty good knowledge that that player does have interest in signing with you. Right. That's so the, that's the risk. Cause if we don't get worked out, then we lost Mackenzie Blackwood and we've taken a couple steps backwards. Like now right. we have no goalies to work with. Absolutely. And the reason why I include this in the deal is because. You know, I saw that you had talked about potentially being interested. The devil should be interested in a Jack Campbell. So I thought, well, if they're interested, let's give them the opportunity to sit down and try and hammer out a deal and get an extra, you know, month and change to try and get that done as opposed to waiting until July 15th, the first day of free agency and trying to outbid other other teams. It it just gives you that extra time to try and get something done with a guy who according to yourself of course um they should be interested in yes absolutely 100 percent. now uh on the flip side of it let's talk about the second overall pick why do you want the second overall pick and who do you have your eye on uh well i want the second overall pick because we're giving up william nylander and that's a hell of a talent that you're giving up so you got to give to get and like as much as i like severson as much as an next guy but that's not a one for one value whatsoever, in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Plus, they played considering different. Severson's also going into a contract year, there's at least two years left for Nylander. So, you Seriously, know, you're right about so, that. Right to, about me, that. to me, the second overall pick does two things. One, you're kind of replacing Nylander, sort of like Yuri Slavkovsky is the player that I'm kind of taking a peek at, the, the uh, Slovakian winger. He, he, looked really good at the world championships this year. They got nine also points in eight the Olympics. games and, and at the Olympics, you're correct. And uh, before the world juniors got ended, you know, he was a player at the world juniors, I, I, I believe as well. Um, so that's the guy who I'm kind of looking at and he could eventually maybe turn into a William Nylander in terms of being an elite top six winger prospect. It's not quite there yet, obviously, but I've heard you talk many times and you've thrown it out in the chat that, the, the Devils are a team that's ready to kind of compete. They're ready to take that next step from rebuild into contender mode. And I feel like adding Nylander to the group will have a, a much stronger kind of a, a much stronger chance to do that than a 18 year old prospect who it might take them a year or two to get going. Yeah. So in the last episode, I didn't really talk about whether I or not I would do the trade. I just gave like the pros and cons. And when looking at this trade, you're absolutely right. So Nylander, that's someone we could add to our top six. Jack Campbell is an upgrade over Mackenzie Blackwood. The issue that I think a lot of people would have is giving up the second overall pick because that is a bit of a risky situation, especially since Nylander is signed to, uh, like we said, this year, then also like next year. So he has two years remaining on his contract. Um, so my thing is like, I if, okay, if we're able to convince Nylander and Campbell to sign long-term with the Devils, honestly, I think this is a trade that I would do, quite honestly. But, well, Nylander, you won't be able to talk right. extension right. until right. next summer. 
Right, right. right. So that's the so, that's the that's the risk. That is a huge risk. It is, a, 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 which is why everything has to go according to plan. Otherwise, this is going to just blow up, and we take a couple steps backwards. Like no trade, no no trade is like eye for an eye kind of thing. If we're being honest, it's always an investment. It's always a risk kind of thing. And Tom Fitzgerald thinks that the New Jersey Devils are ready to take the next step in their overall development because you know we got our baby big three established we already got you know our I guess quote unquote superstar player in Dougie Hamilton I, I'm sure he'll do better next year once he recovers from his facial fracture and he'll get back to the Norse trophy hunt but uh you know we do want Jack Campbell we've been talking about that um we would get a first round draft pick that's all I could say it's uh, albeit it's going to be towards the the back end of it but you know still we get something in the first round so if I'm doing this trade, uh, if I feel as though Tom Fitzgerald really wants the, the, the Devils to compete, maybe this is a trade you kind of do because it's like, you know, yes, Nylander, he could be a little hesitant at times to attack. But at the same time, you know, you put him with someone like maybe Heischer or something like that, maybe Heischer can, um, you know, help him in, in that sort of regards because that's what Heischer is there to do. He's, wor- he's there to not only, you know, generate points, but he's there to like, you know, work both ends. He's there to like do some of the dirty work. And also, you know, you got uh, Nylander's from, um, he's from Sweden. Jesper Bratt is from Sweden too. So, you know, you get that dynamic a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I think this, and Rasmus Sedin, the X factor, the question mark, but young can develop and can also do a lot of, uh, and has potential. And you said that he could, would have had a big role on the Maple Leafs had he not gotten hurt. So I think if I'm Tom Fitzgerald and if I'm looking at this sort of deal, I think this is something you kind of do. You, you take the risk. Like this trade is a huge risk. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we're not going to get Matthew Kachuk. The chances of that happening are as high as my chance of flying out to the moon tomorrow morning with Jeff Bezos. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I think, I, if I'm if I'm looking at this deal, I think this is one of the better trade packages I've seen because, like, for the Chicago Blackhawks, the reason why I wouldn't want to trade for Alex DeBrinket, we don't get a first round draft pick because the the Blackhawks can't offer that because they gave it up last year in their Seth Jones deal. So that's a risk that I I kind of saw a little bit. Or for Kevin Fiala, it's like, what else am I getting? So, yeah. so I think that's um, I think. Yeah, I think that's um, I, I think that's a package that's certainly intriguing. I think that could certainly help the Devils in the future. You know, I put out an episode. And I said, "Have at it." How how would you guys feel? Some love it. Some think it's fair. Others, you know, we're just like, you know, let's just play it safe. You know, that kind of thing. But if we're looking to take our team to the next level, why not get someone who is very productive with the Maple Leafs? Why not get someone who could be uh develop in the right way we get a good goalie in jack campbell and we also get a first round draft pick and we could find possibly a diamond in the rough yeah absolutely you could definitely find so i mean dawson mercer was a mid pick he was what like 18th or something like that like he was a mid first round pick so i think outside of the top five honestly maybe even top 10 from like 10 to four talent right so Da- yeah, da- and also Jesper Bratt was a sixth round draft pick. Uh, Yegor Sharangovich, fifth round, I think, something like that. So it's not out of the ordinary to find a diamond in the rough, quite honestly. And I, I think the, I think the Devils could do it. So, Mike, so what's what's your question? I got one question before we go, and it's 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 I, I want to know about Miles Wood actually, okay. because I had read uh, that there's a potential that the Devils could not tender him, not offer a qualifying offer, which would make him a free agent. Do you know if, do you have any inclination of whether or not they would be willing to do that? See, uh, I haven't heard anything in that regards, but the thing about Miles Wood is that he was injured for like 97% of the season. He came mm-hmm. back for a few games. I said that was not necessary. He was not himself. He had a few big hits, but like no, nothing to write home about. I, he just wasn't ready. Like there was no reason to bring him back. It was late in the season. And I was, and you know, the thing was, this was a contract year for miles wood. So I'm sure he was coming back to just show that he can potentially do a lot of things And we did miss him. He's a glue piece for this organization, but at the same time, it's just like, I think we have no choice, but to offer him a qualifying offer, but 
personally, I haven't heard anything quite yet in, in that regards. We would love to have him back. He is definitely a good addition to have onto any roster, does the dirty work, a, a glue guy, things of that nature. But in terms of just the qualifying offer, if we, if we can offer him that or not, I'm not entirely sure. I know, I know we're going to have to give Jesper Bratt a big payday. Um, I know uh, we're going to maybe have to re-sign Zaka if we want to use him in a deal, like as a trade pawn. Well, he was another guy who I had read was like both of those players. There was, I think it was Elliot Freeman in his 32 thoughts recently came out and said that those two among a few different other guys uh, potentially could end up not being bought. Cause I'm just looking now, miles wood, his salary this year was three and a half million. So that's what his qualifying rate would be at three and a half million dollar cap hit uh, is is the worth three and a half million to the to the new jersey devils i don't know i don't I know mean, the thing is miles wood has no room to be picky like no one's going to be i don't think anyone's going to be picking up the phone for him because he had to have a cert he had surgery at the I, beginning I'll of the say year. the maple Leafs would be picking up the phone if this guy because if you don't tender him he's a free agent and then there's 31 other teams that could be interested in i know the maple Leafs could use a miles wood at three and a half million bucks i'm not so sure but if it ends up being similar to last year where the Leafs were able to pick up an Andre Kasha for a million dollars after he didn't get tendered an RFA deal just as a, a way to rebuild his stock, I would be very much interested in doing that. So I don't know if he can He can be picky. Then it's, it's up to Ray Shiro if he believes he's deserving of that type of money or not. Uh, I think you mean Tom Fitzgerald, the general. general Sorry, yeah, yeah, Tom Fitzgerald. Yeah. Tom Fitzgerald. Shiro Tom, signed yeah. the deal. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, I was about to say, wait, Cheryl's back? <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I mean, it'll be up for Tom Fitzgerald. I think a deal might most likely get done, but we'll see what happens. And uh, I would love to have Miles Wood back on his team. I'm, I'm sure we missed his aggression. We missed his grittiness. We missed his uh, overall determination and just being able to work both ends. He had a pretty good year last year in the shortened season. So I would love to have Miles Wood back onto this team, but we're just going to have to wait to see what happens. But overall, it was a contract year for him. Barely played, and, and the games he did play, he was pretty much a non-factor. And I just said there was no – I even said this. I said there was no reason to bring him back. Then we learn our lesson with Mackenzie Blackwood. You know, don't rush a player back. Like, there's no reason to. Like, what, what's he going to do? The season's over for us. And they brought him back. He In the, like, three or four games he played in, a few big hits here and there, pretty much did nothing. And I was hey, like, I told you so. Just toss his rights into the deal too. Just toss his rights into the deal and, and call her a day and we'll make the deal work. We'll see about that. We'll see what, ha we'll see what happens. But uh, Michael, thank you for uh, joining me and thank you for uh, doing this crossover and sh shining some light in, in this overall circumstance. Yeah, man. Anytime, pal.